Hello. Good morning, afternoon and evening. Good more aft eve. Hope it's going well for you. So in this one I'd like to get into the topic of enlightened love and what it is, how it works, how to cultivate it. Let's get into it. You might wonder, well, why not use a term like unconditional love rather than enlightened love? Unconditional love is often regarded as being between two people. It's like one person unconditionally loving another person. And that's only an aspect of enlightened love. Enlightened love can include that, but it's actually more of a general love towards other, other human beings, to oneself, and to life in general, and to one's one's creator, if you believe in God, then it's also towards the, the source of all things. So it includes everything, really. And it's not just about other human beings, it's about all forms of life and life itself, and the, the process and experience of life. And it includes things like beauty, compassion, and kindness, forgiveness, and cultivating those kind of qualities as part of enlightened love and sometimes like for example with, with unconditional love people might say something like I want to be loved unconditionally by someone usually they want to be loved unconditionally by someone else but as soon as they say that they're actually putting a condition <laughs> on something mm -hmm. so I, I think that the term unconditional love gets somewhat misused and misunderstood so that's why I prefer to stick with the idea of, of enlightened love and I guess you could say it's sort of somewhat similar to what they call agape love in the, the Greek mode of doing things, because that's more like also a kind of universal, general form of love. So anyway, the main thing about enlightened love is not about gaining something from anybody else. It's about uh, giving. Ironically, it can also be about receiving, because if we're in a state of giving, it's important not to, get, to become aloof about it, so that we give and give, but are never available for anybody to give to us. That wouldn't be right either, because it's out of balance. It doesn't give other people the opportunity of giving uh, and to give back. So we need to be part of the cycle of life and engage with giving and be open to receiving. But our motive isn't to receive. And our motive isn't to receive approval from others or benefits from others. It's giving for the joy of giving and it's loving for the joy of loving. And so part of it is looking for what aspects of life bring that sense of, of loving care out in us and spending more time <laughs> on those things. Spending more time, you know, in nature and looking at flowers, looking at trees, looking at growing things, art or music or whatever brings that feeling out and deliberately spending more time on those things. Like if we're out in the park, we're on just glancing at the trees or the flowers and walking on. Actually sitting down somewhere safe if you're you know, in a safe environment where you can relax. Allowing yourself space to feel the feeling, however it originally, initially comes. And initially it might just be you start to relax. And then and you might be only have a feeling of appreciation for a few seconds or part of a second. But then by cultivating it and spending time with it, that sense of appreciation, which is one of the natural things that leads to love, grows. So it's not a difficult thing to cultivate. It's quite an easy thing and it's a very enjoyable thing to cultivate. And, and as we learn to cultivate those kind of feelings, naturally what comes out of that is a desire to give. So it's like we're not forcing giving. We're not forcing ourselves to feel grateful. Uh, we're not pushing it. The feelings of giving and of generosity and wanting to benefit others and benefit life in general comes out of cultivating those feelings and it, it comes out naturally. There's no effort. It's easier to feel thankful or something when, when you enjoy it. <laughs> you might find yourself feeling more gratitude for the good things in life because you're allowing yourself time to enjoy things. When you enjoy something, it's, as I say, it's much easier to, to appreciate it and to feel grateful for it. So more gratitude arises. And so we create this virtuous circle of taking time to enjoy things, feeling grateful for things, feeling um, a heartfelt connection with things, feeling uh, a sense of enjoyment of life, a sense of pleasure in life. And out of that comes like a sense of 
being willing to connect with others, and it all begins to build and feed in itself quite easily, naturally, without any strain, just by allowing some space in life to cultivate and, with, and intentionally cultivating a sense of enlightened love and exploring, well, what does that mean? What does enlightened love mean to you? How, how do you conceive of it? And by giving attention to it, you'll find a couple of things. One, you'll find within yourself ideas and ways to cultivate it. And also you'll discover the barriers within yourself <laughs> to this kind of enlightened love. The typical barriers would be things like cynicism, judgmentalism, uh, those kind of things. And some people are wary of giving up being judgmental because they feel, well, well I'll, get my, I'll create problems for myself, I'll create issues for myself, I'll end up you know, in messy situations because I haven't used my judgment to, to navigate my way through life. Is we can cultivate discernment rather than judgment. And discernment allows us to perceive likelihood of a situation or form of behavior from somebody, how they're likely to act or react in a given situation. Discernment lets us do that without a whole lot of heavy emotions around it. For example, when we judge somebody, we might think, oh, you know, we may have, have noticed that somebody's stolen something from us, right, for example. And we judge that person, oh, they're a thief, I want nothing to do with them, I can't trust them. And, and there's, some, there's some truth in that. However, it, it might not be the whole person. In fact, it's not the whole person. For example, there may be a friend of yours that you can trust with your sister, but you can't trust with your money. Or you can trust them with your money, but you can't trust them with your sister. So judgment tends to lead us to being a complete blanket assessment of somebody and not allowing for the, the good sides of them. So, but whereas discernment does enable us to allow for the good side of somebody. We can see where we, maybe we can't trust them at the moment, <laughs> but we can see where we could trust them as well. Uh, not a permanent kind of situation. Discernment allows us a bit more flexibility. And also judgment tends to be a mental habit. I can't, at least for me anyway, it was a mental habit. I did this exercise for a while where, and I would sit in a cafe and I would watch people going by and I would just deliberately watch myself judging and how I would tend to judge people. Just to really make myself conscious of doing that, of, of judging. And I'd notice it would be for ridiculous things, you know. Uh, oh, that person looks a bit grumpy or oh, I don't like this about that person. And I just <laughs> watched my mind doing this. And it actually get quite funny after a while. And by making it conscious, I tended to become less judgmental because it just was ridiculous. I was being judgmental for absolutely no reason. There was no reason for me sitting there judging these people. They were just walking past. So by becoming conscious of judgment, we tend to let it go then because it's not a good emotional state to be in. It doesn't bring good feelings with it. It tends to bring unhappy, uncomfortable feelings. So being judgmental is not a good experience. And so as we let go of being judgmental, that creates more space for warmer, kinder, more loving thoughts and feelings to come in. Get the weeds out of the way so that the flowers can grow in the garden and we can cultivate these finer qualities of compassion and kindness and forgiveness as part of enlightened love. And also it makes us happier. And there's a very good reason for cultivating enlightened love because it makes us happier and life becomes more enjoyable. Even if the circumstances don't change, which they probably will once we've cultivated a bit of enlightened love, but even if the circumstances don't change, we become happier in the circumstances and we become happier with the people that we already know and that are already in our life. And then another bit of it is cynicism, letting go of cynicism. And cynicism is, in a sense, of another form of judgment, but it's about life in general or people in general. And again, cynicism is a mental habit that brings with it unhappy feelings. And it's one of these things that we tend to believe is protecting us. But actually, it's Cynicism is like owning a dog that keeps biting its owner and the owner doesn't know that the dog is biting them. <laughs> I wonder why there's so much pain in their life. But if you look at cynicism and the, the feeling state that comes with it, it's not pretty, it's not nice and it's, it's toxic. And again, discernment can be used to take the place of cynicism. So cultivating discernment and wisdom serves far better than being cynical. And the interesting thing about wisdom is the more we're able to forgive the situations that have happened in life, the more wisdom we gain. 
because when we don't forgive, we have got a frozen experience about something. We're frozen around it. It's like something we've eaten that we have not digested. It just sits as a lump. It's a fr frozen, undigested experience. So if we don't forgive, we don't get the nutritional value out of the experience. And the nutritional value out of experience is wisdom. So there's a close connection between forgiveness and wisdom. And forgiveness can help us let go of the patterns of thinking that creates judgment and cynicism and free us up internally so that we can cultivate this more benign sense of life, of being alive in the world. And um, so in a nutshell then, and cultivating this enlightened love is a good thing to do because it gives us a better feeling about life because it enables us to let go of things like judgmentalism and cynicism and cultivate discernment and wisdom instead. So we can have a more positive stance, internal stance towards life and towards other people and towards ourselves. And so there's many benefits from cultivating enlightened love. And of course, it makes life more enjoyable and more pleasant and makes us more enjoyable and more pleasant to be around. <laughs> What happens is when, as we line up with a thing, something like enlightened love, then it begins to affect everything. It affects our tone of voice. It affects how we look at people. It affects our body language, and become more congenial to be around, and and um, more a feeling of giving to others, even if it's just giving a a, a soft smile, <laughs> not pushing anything, just being with that. So there's many benefits for developing this enlightened love. On a deeper level, some of the benefits are like very spiritual paths and religions and philosophies of basically uh, the, the sages through the ages, you might say, that there's wise beings who throughout the ages have tried to guide humanity to some more enlightened way of being. Basically say that we walk in illusions and the way to get break through the illusions is love in some shape or form. They may express it in different ways, but it boils down to some kind of love. And that's the basic thing that they all say ultimately. And that, that brings us greater happiness, that breaks us out of our illusions and that we become more fulfilled and happy. Not aware of any one of them that became more enlightened says, no, forget it, it's actually better not to be enlightened. They all say that becoming more enlightened is the way to go. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this exploration into enlightened love and you find it useful and um, if you want to pr go more deep into it you can also use affirmations and uh, if you're interested let me know in the comments and I'll do some specific affirmation exercises on cultivating enlightened love. Be you, be your best, be your best self. You're awesome, go for it.